Well, this is it. Richard Thomas and Baldwin's Limited, makers of steel, sheet, and tin plate. It's quite a work, the better part of three miles long. Iron and steel making have been at the heart of Abu Vale for more than 200 years. It provided work for more than 13,000 men and women, steel workers, office workers, nurses and many more. It also provided regular wages and social facilities like sports grounds and a healthcare system. Above all, a deep and close sense of community, friendship and open door support for each other. In short, the works, as it was always affectionately known, was the cement which bound the community together. It was the only steelworks in the UK built right in the centre of a small town. The work was often dangerous and always dirty. Teamwork was vital in such an environment. Close, lasting bonds were forged along with the steel. Key former steelworkers there also remember the humour, the camaraderie, the characters produced by such a close-knit works, which was the beating, throbbing heart of the town and the communities all around it. I think people sometimes forget that probably during the, the mid-60s there was some 13,000 people working in this site and not just from the immediate area, you're talking the South Wales Valleys and beyond and that community I described during the, the months and, and years that I worked in the steel industry was a family, it was a family of steel and the people grew together, you know you came in as a boy at 16 and you were a man when you left. You, you, know, you grew up very, very quickly in the steel industry. And this was the town. The town developed around the iron and steel industry of this valley. There was no ebb of ale until the iron, coal and steel companies came here. Not only was the, the comradeship of the people who worked together, and to some extent that extended the mining industry as well, but you know things like almost everyone in the works would pay a tanner a week of their ticket for Ebbville Rugby Club, Ebbville Football Club, mostly for the rugby club, it must be said. The shops were booming. The town was dirty. Women had to check which way the wind was blowing before they hung their washing out. If it was blown the wrong way, they wouldn't hang it out because they'd have to wash it again. And there was a camaraderie in there, that the nicknames that people had. Unfortunately, a, a chap had half a year cut off in the pickle line and he was built, known as Billy 18 months. And that's because he only had a year and a half. 40 years ago, I would imagine six, seven, eight thousand people worked in the steelworks, providing good wages to the community, a thriving town. It was very important to the community. The steelworks was the hub of activity. The camaraderie, spirit, binded the valley together. But one of the boys on shift with me, um, I was on shift one night doing some cleaning with, and bear in mind this is industrial caustic soda and boiling water. And I was cleaning some lenses, glass lenses, came up a treat, absolutely beautiful. And this individual said to me, he said, oh, that's a good idea. He said the following shift he came in, same process. He brought in his wife's chip pan to clean. And so he left it in there to soak over a couple of hours and went back and all that was left was a wooden handle. <laughs> There's a story that my father used to tell where they had toilets which you just went into a trough. A guy who hung his jacket up, did what he had to do, and dropped his jacket and he went in the trough just as the trough flushed. And um, my father caught him with a cesspit open with a long pole. He said, what are you doing there? He said, I'm looking for a jacket. He said, well, don't be any good now, for God's sake. No, he said, but my sandwiches are in the pocket. But the place was very dangerous. I mean, many industrial accidents over the years <clears throat> but the one that sticks in my memory is my own aunt Grace Simmons who was a lady that was a cleaner again this plant had everything from technicians to engineers right through it was work for everyone and she worked in one of the offices as a cleaner and the one shift she was on a ladle of molten metal which later would have been the iron and that would have gone through these mills tipped onto the office she was working in and she was burned to death, never found. The, the plant itself, the injuries and the things that it 
we had to live with over those years. But having said that, I think the danger of the industry brought you closer to the people you work with. By the 1970s, all these things started to unravel. Over a 30-year period, wave after wave of cutbacks and redundancies hit the works in the town. Just over a decade ago, the shock news came that the plant might close, that the community might lose its main employer and economic lifeline. The ISTC Steel Union drew together a financial package to buy the plant. It would have been the biggest ever workers' buyout in British industrial history. There was a package put together to buy the plant. They were very traumatic times about 10, 11 years ago. The reason Chorus didn't want to sell the plant, I believe, was obviously they didn't want another commercial operator operating in the template market. There were threats of strikes. Some people took redundancies, causing friction amongst those who wanted to save the works. The former British Steel had previously sold the plant to the Dutch firm Chorus. For weeks, the company refused to reveal where the axe would fall and on which of their steel plants. Senior Welsh and UK politicians wrung their hands, describing Chorus's actions as sadistic and utterly disgraceful. But finally, they had to admit they couldn't do anything about it. At the start of 2001, Chorus ended the agonising wait. The plant was to close. My own opinion, we could have put what package we like. We could have volunteered to work for nothing. The decision had been made that Ebervale was going to close and close it was going to do. For all our efforts, the meetings we had and everything, the decision had been made and the nothing we could have done would have changed that decision. Despite all attempts, the community lost its best paying and only major employer. A decade or so on, the aim of this film is to look at the effects. Some would say, why don't you just leave? What is obvious is that the local people have no intention of just abandoning this tight-knit community and that despite the doom-mongers, that fighting spirit which marks out this community is beginning to produce new, if different, roots. The site is being revitalised, though many still feel a terrible sense of loss and are sceptical about what has replaced what was the throbbing, beating heart of the community and all those around it. People walked out to you with their head held high, but that feeling of pride started to dissipate very, not very quickly, but and there was a sense of hopelessness. Shops were closing, we couldn't attract the major shops. There were all sorts of problems, and the greatest problems were really for the youngsters. Others see the redevelopment of the works as a start towards regeneration, but just a start. Out of the total workforce left in 2002, I would say 80% of the people who wanted jobs were successful in having jobs either in other chorus plants or found alternative employment. Obviously, the remainder of the people, like myself, went out on early retirement or decided not to stay in the steelworks and to go down other avenues, i.e. set up their own businesses or to work in other places. So, although they were very sad times, the actual individuals in the plant didn't suffer as much probably as the community suffered because a lot of them found jobs. One of those who have reinvented themselves is Mike Tarr, described to us as a frustrated musician and one of the cleverest workers in the plant. Mike took advantage of a retraining grant when the works closed and was taught how to make guitars. Some people found it really difficult and wasn't able to move on and felt they lost everything, which I did for, for a long time, for maybe three, four years, you know. But that's not so for me now because I have turned my own situation around to, to come back into my favour, not so much with the financial side, but from the personal reward side that I could never have dreamt of when they announced the closure. 
the building of the guitars, I'd always been an interest in my mind from a young lad. I'd always played the guitar since I was nine years of age. When the phone started ringing for my for work, the big question everybody's asking, did I teach? Well, I didn't teach at the time, but I knew there was going to be a big market. So what I'd done then, I settled down for about 18 months and I wrote my own book on how to play the guitar and it was a way of me being able to put it over and that was the big turning point for me that once I had that the closure of the works had gone further back in my mind then because I was now working with young children from six years of age to into their forties and that is no more pleasurable job than I could ever wish to have. From what I learned in the in the steel works, all those skills can be transferred into building a guitar. The same, when I run my workshops for guitar building, we could be in a, a classroom or we could be in a, a hall. But when we go in that hall, that room is transferred into a workshop and everybody in behaves like it's in a workshop. How many young people do you think you pass your skills on to? Um, hundreds. Hundreds? Mm, hundreds. Others have also gone on to new work, and the work site is being completely transformed with a new hospital, a school, houses, college and other developments. I think there's been a wonderful transformation in the plant since the works has closed. If there's any positives out of the closure is what, what the politicians or lo local politicians as well as people in the Welsh Assembly with the help of European funds have done to transform this works out of the sad situation of the works closing there is something positive have come out of the closure. Vis-a-vis, -vis, we've got a brand new hospital here, we've got a brand new college, we've got a brand new leisure centre that's been built. So it has been a transformation on the site. So the site hasn't been left derelict. So there is a lot of positives to come in the community. Despite the recent developments, Blyna Gwent is amongst the top 10 poorest areas in the UK. Its wage is amongst the lowest and there are some areas of it in which one in every two child lives below the official poverty line. I think in terms of the site being redeveloped, thank God for it, because there were sites like Ravenscraig and Valindra that stayed empty for 15 years. And because this was the heart of the valley, the heart of the community, to have done that would have destroyed the community completely. We've suffered enough anyway. So I think the development of it was essential to, to retain in this valley as it is today. The sadness for me is that all we've done is move things. We have a hospital, but we shut three. We have two brand new schools, one secondary, one primary, but we shut four. We have a college, but we've closed the one that was at the top of the valley. So all we've done really is, is move rather than increase. And in the great scheme of things, I'm sorry to say it, but I think in terms of employment, there's probably less jobs on the site now than there would have been if we could have put new things and improved the, the infrastructure in a different way. There is still a great deal to do to revitalise the area, but the locals remain committed to stay there and to try to rebuild. Former mayor, steelworker and councillor charged with regenerating the area, Don Wilcox, hopes it will attract more developments. I'd say about six years ago I met a bloke who I thought was a nutcase. He said to me, um, can you find me about 200 acres? I said, I'll have a look. What do you want it for? He said, an international motorcycle racing circuit. I'll go with this. I think he's in that case, but I'll go with it. It went from 200 acres. It eventually got planning consent for 380 acres. On completion, there'll be a roundabout. There'll be thousands of jobs, but the main importance of this is the, that it was likely to attract other high-tech industries and you know so there'll be a range of jobs hopefully for all abilities and all talents and so this remains a close-knit community and despite the hammer blows it's faced that provides the answer to those who say why don't you just leave
I've always said for many, many times, for many years, that the people of the valleys are extremely resilient. And I've said over and over again, we have the talent, we have the people, no doubt about that. When we talk poverty, Blaine Gwent comes into the equation every single time. And people tend to think of poverty as poverty of money, poverty of food perhaps. I think what we lack is poverty of opportunity. Given the opportunity, the people of this area will, can achieve anything. So there is optimism in that respect. What we need is the investment to bring it into place. When a young man, and I've forgotten his name, from Blaine Gwent Youth Forum spoke in support of the scheme, and he said that for the past four or five years, his mates were not ashamed that would not like, were not likely to advertise the fact that they were from Blaine and Gwent. His mates said that they were unlikely to stay in Blaine and Gwent if they had an opportunity to get out. And now, he says, now that it looks like this motorsports complex is going to come here, people are taking a pride. They say, we're from Blaine and Gwent, where they're going to have this motorsports complex. I think we've got to be really positive. I think there is a future for Blaine and Gwent. We are survivors in the valleys. We've gone through difficult times before. I think there are three areas really. The first area is that valley communities like ours are extremely close. We're close in terms of friendship, in terms of family, and people don't move very far away from their family roots in the Welsh Valley communities. So I think people will always look to stay in the area. Um, the second thing is I think that the young people have ideas. They have entrepreneurship. And I think they still hope that there's going to be people to come in and help them develop that. And that's something I think we need to do. And the third thing I think is that we see opportunities now, albeit small, uh, small parts of it at the moment. There are opportunities for people in this area. And I think that's what the young people want. They want the opportunity to stay in a place they've lived all their lives and their family roots are. Well, there isn't much more to say. We're pretty proud of the job we turn out. In the end, it boils down to teamwork and experience, and whoever it is. Steelmaker, glass furnaceman, mill operator, railwoman, typist, electrician, bookkeeper, or maintenance bloke. They've all given something vital to the contents of these packages. Wherever we send them, to whatever corner of the world, they carry our trademark and our good wishes. Well, it was nice meeting you.